Miss Stan on the road. Go ahead, if you will, please. Yes, sir. First case we have for Mr. Roy Rhodes and also Mr. Talupe Salami, who is the potential developer in this case, is for change in zoning along the Bemis Road corridor from residential to commercial. With that, you can see this is one of the last pieces of properties uh, that we have in this Thompson subdivision that fronts Bemis that is not yet commercial. There is one more besides this one. With that, staff was approached about developing this property. It's currently vacant. Um, there's a curb cut, but no structure on the property for the development of basically an educational uh, recreational facility. With that, staff went through this case, met with the applicant, um, and believe we could recommend for its approval. I know at the work session, um, the planning commissioners had a series of questions. I have about six of them that I reached out to ask Mr. Rhodes, who is the representing real estate agent, as well as Mr. Tulupe and also Mr. Barker to combine on their responses. So I'd like to give you a brief response to those questions. I know the, all those representatives are here tonight should you have further questions, but let me respond to these and we'll see if that can't get us down the road on this one. Um, the first question was about planning to host groups overnight, which the answer was no. Um, do you believe that you'll have enough parking? Our basic standards require for a 3,000 square foot facility they would be required to have 20 spaces. And they believe, yes, they will have enough for the regular parking as well as handicap requirements. Um, they do plan on trying to accommodate for school buses. What they're going to attempt to do is to make their particular facility a drop-off zone for school buses. And then they have a verbal agreement right now with the property owner up the street who um, owns the former nightclub property, plenty of parking. That way the buses have a temporary place to park while the students are inside and they come back and pick them up and drop them off. Um, they do plan on widening their current driveway. They do not plan on adding another driveway. They plan on sharing the driveway with the property owner to the south, Mr. Quinn, who actually is uh, their contractor. So right now I give you verbal agreements on both of those. Um, they do not plan on having any outdoor exhibits or events. And then their main traffic circulation property will be entering from the southern driveway, which is Mr. Quinn's property, and then exiting out their improved driveway, which is currently on their property. So a circular pattern. So they'll have connections to the south. The north doesn't have a current connection because they aren't, um, they don't have a connected driveway to the north, but to the south they do. So currently that kind of gives you some background on the homework we're able to do. We didn't propose any conditions. I don't have anything that really add or change on the recommendation of approval, but I did want to follow up on some of your questions from the work session. Is that it, Yes, sir. Okay, commissioners, any, any questions for staff? Yes, just one question. What were the, um, the operating hours? Commissioner Gladwin, I, I do not believe they identified those in their letter of intent. But I, they have spoken to me about those, and if you wouldn't mind, I think you'll be able to address that in just a few minutes. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anybody else have any questions for staff? Okay, I'll next call people wishing to speak in favor of this request. Anyone, please come forward, state your name and address, and uh, give your presentation, please. hands-on activity, which will include what we call immersive technology. It will include interactive exhibits and displays, all judged towards education. And uh, we we'll also host workshops, various workshops, going all the way from arts workshop, writing workshop, and uh, coding and computer science workshop. Uh, we'll have educational demonstrations, and of course we'll hold 
bad days in an educational and enriching environment where we can learn and play, we call it learn and play. Uh, this activity center meets uh, the following Greater Lounge comprehensive plan and goals and policies. Uh, goal 1, policy 2.1, and of course it's not limited to this, we could still have an addition of new jobs to Lounge County. Goal 2, policy 2.2.4 2 and 2.2.5, increase the knowledge and understanding of students and residents of Magosta in the area of science. Goal 5, policy 5.5, to promote science programs in general, K through K-12 students and other residents of Lounge community and to enhance knowledge. Goal 6, policy 6.2.3, collaborate and develop partnership with K-12 schools, K-12 schools and other educational providers in the Lounge County area. Goal 10, policy 10.1.1, to promote technology and offer training programs to students and residents interested in, in learning. I believe strongly that this development will have a positive impact not only to the students but uh, to their parents, teachers and educators, uh, but also to all residents of Lowndes County and beyond the South Georgia area. About the South facility, uh, we will build to the required standard and I'm sure the Commission has is going to be a very beautiful facility. We will be called. Be very proud. Thank you. Any questions? Go ahead. About how many this? About how many people will you be employing? Well, right now we're looking at six, including my wife, which will be seven. <laughs> when you max out, have you any idea what you'll have? When you get fully fully operational, mm -hmm. well, we we've been working with the uh, with the small business development, and we master right now twelve when we get fully operational. But the goal, the long term goal, as written in our business plan, is to expand in the next two three years, hopefully. So we can. Okay. So we'll actually contribute to the future of the we're not going anywhere we're here, so we'll keep growing, hopefully. Okay. Any other questions? Sure. Just curiosity, your goal ten. It, you said resident interested in learning coding. What what's coding? Computer coding. Computer? Computer oh. language. So we'll have workshops for for example, we take our kids as far as Orlando for coding workshop to learn how to, you know, and write computer programs. We, we don't even have any close by, so we drive all the way to Orlando to give them that, you know, experience. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to bring that here to help students learn. Okay, thank you. I'm just curious. Yes, we're fine. Just a couple of questions. Um, how big will the facility be? It's going to be 3,000 square foot. That's what we're proposing right now. Are you currently, um, um, operating from, are you currently providing these services anymore? No. Not. Not. But I have a lot of experience with that. So. What would the operating hours be? Is that an after school? Uh, well, or? from Monday to Fridays, we want to cater to homeschoolers. So from Monday to Fridays, from 10 to 5 p.m. Okay. Then on Saturday and Sundays, it could be from 9 to 6 p.m. Now, during summer, summer days, we we'll have a longer opening time. But right now, this is the So the idea during the school year, you'll be supplementing homeschoolers? Homeschoolers, yes. Homeschoolers. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this request? Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request? Hearing none, we'll go on to anyone wishing to speak against this request. 
Do we have anyone in the audience who would like to speak against this request? Okay, this time the public input has been closed. I'll turn it over to the commissioners for any questions or comments. One more question, so, Jason. How, did, you said that what would the parking criteria, parking requirement be for this facility? 3,000 square feet would require 20 spaces. So it's basically one space for every 150 square feet. But our parking accommodations don't really um, control for like a bus. So that's something we felt like we wanted to nail down and have in, in place um, a plan at least to accommodate for that kind of traffic. But general parking requirements, one for every 150 square feet. So for him, it would be 20 spaces. Why, what is the occupancy considered for that? It's 150. I mean, or what, what is the classification of the building? I'm just curious to know how that was established. Carmel Indoor Recreation? For the occupancy, probably a business. Mm -hmm. Instead of an institution, I think it would be a business. Mm -hmm. Well, man, we, we, we've had this conversation because we talked about what they would be. Indoor recreation activities, parking-wise. Now, what inspections classified the building? I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I, some type of assembly, I, I would assume, but I, mm -hmm. I do not know. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I'll close the this session and ask for a vote. So, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we make a recommendation to approve uh, changing the zoning from R21 to CG. Thank you, Commissioner. Any seconds? Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. 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 All opposed? Right it's unanimous. Thank you all very much. Okay, gentlemen.